This is the online tip supplement to the covariance and correlation lecture and I'm mainly going to go, go through the, the calculational aspects here. What we need, as, as we discussed in the lecture, both covariance and correlation are measures of how closely two variables are related to each other. Okay, so they, they both measure the relation between two variables. Between two variables. And as we have or will discuss, uh, the, the correlation measure is very closely related to the covariance measure. It's a rescaled measure and it has the advantage that it is unit free, it's independent of the scaling of the data um, and we can compare it between different sort of sets of random variables. Now what we need for, for the calculation, so we have two random variables, so here in our particular example we'll call them xi and yi, but what we need is we need observations for the two random variables and we need observations for both random variables for all entities. So here this is sort of an anonymous example, just a toy example. Let's say these are individuals. We need, we have six individuals and for each of these individuals we have observations for both X and for Y. If you have some individuals for which there is uh, no observations or one of the two random variables is missing then you cannot include that observation in your calculation so you need for each entity you need observations for both random variables now before we complete this table uh, let's just briefly have a look at the formula to see what we need so here is the formula Okay, the sample covariance, the S represents uh, the fact that we have a sample and the covariance between X and Y. And what we need is this, we need the sum of XI minus X bar times YI minus Y bar and then divided by N minus 1 where N is the sample size. So xi minus x bar, that looks familiar because remember when we calculated the uh, variance, the sample variance for x, what we calculated was the sum, that was a terrible looking sum, that's the sum of xi minus x bar squared divided by n minus 1. That was the sample variance for x. So here we also needed xi minus x bar. And of course, in the calculation for the sample variance for y, we need a yi minus y bar. So if you've calculated variances, you actually have these terms already. So then, once we have these deviations from the mean, we need the product of these two and then the sum, and then we divide by n minus 1. So before we continue, what we, what we need is this x bar and the y bar, otherwise we can't continue, of course x bar is the sum of all xi divided by n and y bar is the sum of all yi divided by n. So sum of all xi is this sum here. If you calculate that, i leave that up to you, we get the sum of 27.6. So x bar is 27.6 divided by n, n is 6, and uh, I just need a little bit more space here, and that will give us 4.6, so x bar is 4.6, now if we sum up all the y's, which we need to calculate y bar, what you get is 72.6, and that means we have a y bar 72.6 divided by 6 and that gives us a y bar of 12.1 so with that information we can now go and calculate the deviations 4.7 minus 4.6 
is 0 0.1, 6.3 minus 4.6 is 1.7, and I'll shut up and just write the solutions. And lastly, 5.9 minus 4.6 is 1.3. Okay, so we still have pluses and negatives, that's important. And then uh, yi, the first y minus y bar 12.1, that is negative 0.8. 15.6 minus 12.1 is, sorry, 3.5. And then again, I will just enter what we get here. So whenever you calculate variances and uh, covariances, what you really need is uh, you, you need this sort of table. Okay. Now, do we need the sums of all these? No, we don't. Okay. We need the sum of the product. If you were to calculate the sum, you would find out that they all sum to zero. So what we now need is that value times that value. And that will be negative 0.08. Then we need this value 1.7 times 3.5 and we'll get 5.95. Then negative 3.2 times negative 3.4 that will be positive value and we'll get 10.88. Negative 0.8 times negative 1.6 uh, what we get is 1.28 then 0.9 times 0.5 is 0.45 and 1.3 times 1.8 is 2.34 now you've already seen that mainly we have in these two columns the same signs okay that is a sign either both negative or both positive there's one exception here the first one Mainly we have the same, same sign. That's a sign of most likely we're going to get a positive covariance or correlation. So what we now need for this formula is this sum, the sum of this column. And if you calculate that, uh, let me just highlight this, this guy here. Okay, that is 20.8. Eight, two. So that means S X Y is 20.82 divided by n minus 1, n is 6, n minus 1 is 5. So what we get here is 4.164. Now of course as we discussed in the lecture, this is difficult, uh, this is difficult to interpret uh, this value. Okay. So what we want is some sort of standardized value of covariance. One which helps us with the interpretation. That measure is going to be correlation. Okay, let me just uh, paste that here. Let me also um, paste, oh no, I'll just, I'll just write it here. The covariance formula uh, was again, I was S, X, Y, that was uh, the sum of X, I minus X bar times Y, I minus Y bar divided by N minus 1. So this was covariance and this is correlation. So we haven't really looked at this correlation formula yet. Let me do this in in just a minute. Uh, one more thing, perhaps we can actually do a little table here. Okay, so covariance, correlation, here we have the formula, formula, and here let's say what is the possible range for values. Now let me just tell you the possible range for covariance and correlation measures is from negative infinity to plus infinity. So there are basically no restrictions. This value can take any sort of 
uh, value. Now what we want to achieve, and this is sort of the, the new thing, okay, that's why I put it in one uh, in red. We want to achieve a measure, and we will call that correlation, that restricts our measure of how closely variables are related to a range, and that range is going to be negative 1 to plus 1, okay, where plus 1 is a perfect positive relationship, perfect positive relationship, and negative 1 represents a perfect negative relationship. So the question is how do we achieve this? How do we go from covariance to correlation? And now what we basically have is we have a rescaled correlation will turn out to be a rescaled version of the covariance. And we can see that because our covariance which is SXY actually appears in the formula for the correlation. Okay, and it uh, appears in the numerator, and then there's something in the denominator. So basically, correlation is a rescaled version of covariance. And how do we rescale? Well, we rescale by dividing by the two sample standard deviations, Sx and Sy. Okay, you know these symbols already. They are Sx and S uh, and Sy. They're the sample standard deviations of x and the sample standard deviations of y. So both of us tell us in sort of the the range in which x and y typically vary. So we're going to divide by the product of these two, and it turns out this achieves this. Okay, this division by the standard deviations will achieve exactly that. So, why that is, you don't necessarily need to know, you just need to uh, accept this. Okay, that can be frustrating here and something like this, but it's appropriate at this stage. So what we now want to do is, we want to calculate the correlation for our uh, for the sample we have uh, we have above. Let me just before we do this, I just want to briefly review our formula for Sx and then for Sy. You know you know that okay. You know that the uh, the variance sample variance of x. We actually wrote that up there already. Let me just copy that again. Is xi minus x bar squared the sum of all of these divided by n minus 1 and then the square root thereof and uh, sy will have exactly the same sum of yi minus y bar squared divided by n minus 1. So let's just put everything before we calculate we'll see whether we can make our life just somewhat easier we'll use a little bit of algebra so now r x y is s x y that's our formula up here let me just uh, copy that actually um, do it like this okay divided by, and now we have here we have the sample standard deviation of x times the sample standard deviation of y. Okay, so now this looks pretty complicated. Let me see where we can simplify that. We have a division by n minus 1 here, but we have n minus 1s here as well. So perhaps these can sort of cancel out. To see that, we'll first have to rewrite uh, the lower bit uh, somewhat. Actually, uh, let me do that uh, in here. Instead of writing two square roots, we can also put everything into one square root. Okay, I'll use just a little 
a little trick here. So we can make one square root of this and there will be a multiplication. Now of course, so what we have here is that sum times that sum and now we can all put that on one ratio. So we have that times that is that times that. Now n minus 1 times n minus 1 can of course also be written as n minus 1 squared. Okay, n minus 1 times n minus 1 is the same as n minus 1 squared. And now you may want to remember uh, some of your square root uh, rules. We can actually bring this guy outside of the square root. And what's the square root? of n minus 1 uh, squared, well, that is just going to be n minus 1. So let's go across here. We'll do a little bit of simplification now. A big ratio. Firstly, the top I'll write as 1 over n minus 1 times the sum of xi minus x bar y i minus y bar. Okay, so and then I said we can bring this guy here, we can bring that outside, and that is going to be 1 over n minus 1. Okay, so square root of n minus 1 squared is n minus 1, but we have it in the uh, denominator, so it's 1 over n minus 1, and then we have times the square root of. the sum of xi minus x bar squared times the sum of yi minus y bar squared. And now you can see these two guys here, 1 over n minus 1 divided by 1 over n minus 1, they just cancel out. Now this is quite handy and instead of just cancelling out, let me just actually erase them. So we end up with a sort of simplified formula for the uh, correlation, which is to have the sum of our product here, xi minus x bar times yi minus y bar, we already calculated that above, divided by the square root of the sum of these two squared, the sum of the squared deviations. So with this formula, we'll uh, go back to our calculations. Okay, what we're basically going to do is we're going to get our table across. I'll just copy that. Do it up here. So, here's our table. Let's see what we have done already. So we want to calculate, and we put that in red, the correlation. Okay. Now this bit here, the sum of xi minus x bar times yi minus y bar, this bit we've already calculated. That was the blue bit. Okay, I'll put a tick in here. So what we now need to calculate are uh, the other bits here. Okay, this one. So what we need for that, firstly here, the sum of xi minus x bar squared. Now we already have xi minus x bar, but we need xi minus x bar squared. And then we will also need yi minus y bar. yi minus y bar squared. Okay, so we need to extend our table. So, uh, let's see if I can make this a little nicer. Here we go. This is as pretty as it will get here. So, xi minus x bar, we have 0.1, so now we need 0.1 squared, and that is just going to be 0.01. And we'll go through the xi minus x bar column 1.7 squared is going to be. 
2.89 and so forth. Let me just negative 3.2 squared is 10.24 and I'll just complete this. Of course you have these results also in the lecture notes. 1.69 and then I'll complete this column. So we have negative 0.8 squared that's going to be 0.64 and then 3.5 squared is going to be 12.25 and so forth. Three point two four. So now what we need in our calculation is not it's the sum of each of these columns. Okay, so we need the sum here. This one is 16.28 and here we have 30.50. So now we can go to, back to our calculation. Here we have the blue term up here is of course 20.82. 20 and then we need the square root of 16.28, that's the sum of the xi minus x bar squared, 16.28 times the sum of yi minus, oh sorry, yi minus y bar squared, so that should be a y here, and that is 30.5, 30.5, that comes from, from here. Okay, and uh, if you calculate that, what you will get is a value of 0.9343. So, as we said, this value here, the value Rxi, is indeed in our range from negative 1 to plus 1. So in this particular case it turns out to be very close to plus 1. So we, are, we have pretty close to a perfect positive relationship. Of course you could have used this formula here to get to the result. We calculated the covariance before that was uh, 4.164 and you could have calculated the two sample standard deviations and the lecture slides you can see the correlations for that and you would have gotten exactly the same result of 0.9343. So we know that a strong positive correlation means that if we were to plot the data in a scatter diagram, let me just uh, do this very roughly here, So we have y and x. So the first observation is uh, the y data are between let's say 5, 10, 15, and the x data are between let's put a 0 here, um, let's put a 5 here, and a 10 here. So data are 4.7, somewhere here, 6.315, somewhere here. This is only going to be very rough. Um, 1817 here, 3.8, 10.5, so that's somewhere here, 5.5, 12, somewhere here, and 5.9, 13.9 somewhere here. So a strong correlation of Rxy, in our case that was 0.9343, means that if we were to fit a line of best fit in here, these points would be very close to that line. As you can see, you know, they're all fairly close. Uh, to that line. If we had an alternative data set, let me uh, use another color here, not a very pretty color. If we mm -hmm. had observations which were 
here these sort of yellowish observations they're clearly not as close to the line of best fit they would possibly have more or less the line, same line of best fit but they're clearly not as close so the, the correlation between x and y for the orangey data would clearly be much much smaller than 0.9 Three, four, three. Then, without having the data, we ca can't calculate it, but it would be much smaller. So, this is all I want to say for these practical calculations of correlations. Of course, I assume that you have a black belt uh, in these correlation correlations, because uh, I can possibly predict that you'll have to do these in the exam. But that's not much of a secret. Anyway, enjoy.